on the aid, this is a good transition to something that just transpired here in the Senate. Um, you had tr two senators, Democratic senators, who traveled to the region to evaluate the aid distribution. And they were basically shocked and horrified, and they also were debunking the Israeli propaganda, the Israeli lies about how, oh, we're doing everything we can to get humanitarian aid. And they said, no, you're not whatsoever. You're throwing up all these roadblocks to make it impossible to get sufficient aid into Gaza. People are literally starving to death. And so what we're really, for a sort of run-of-the-mill, standard-issue, liberal Democratic senator, quite extraordinary comments made last night he said, number one, he has confirmation that kids are now starving to death in Gaza, per Cindy McCain, who's the head of the World Food mm -hmm. Program, which is interesting in and of itself, but per Cindy McCain, kids are now starving to death. And he says clearly and unequivocally, this is a war crime and the people who are doing this are war criminals. Let's take a listen to that. Madam President, I want that to sink in. Kids in Gaza, are now dying from the deliberate withholding of food. In addition to the horror of that news, one other thing is true. That is a war crime. It is a textbook war crime. And that makes those who orchestrate it war criminals. So now the question is, what will the United States do? What will we do? What will President Biden do? President Biden must take action in response to what is happening. His comments, very forceful there. And this came in the context of debate over that Ukraine-Israel bill, which just passed the Senate with a supermajority. But in spite of the fact that he says these are war crimes and the people who are doing this are war criminals, he still voted yes on the bill. <laughs> Probably like, because of Ukraine. Well, that's yeah. what he said. Yeah. And Elizabeth yeah, like, Warren said the same thing. But it's yeah. like, how can you knowingly, like you know these are war crimes. You said it on the Senate floor that they're war crimes. And you're like, but I'm going to go ahead and ship billions more to the people I am calling war criminals. Like, he goes on, oh, you know, what should we do as United States of America? It's President Biden has to hold them accountable, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, you are a United States senator. You have, you are incredibly powerful and influential, actually, within the caucus, in particular on foreign policy. For you to say these are war crimes, yes, that's extraordinary. But then the next thing you do is to vote through the funding? I just don't even know what to say to that. Uh, I mean, I, I know, which is that Ukraine is a religion and it's like a mind disease for a lot of people. And it's literally, I mean, you, Israel is the same way, right? For a lot of Republicans. They're like, I will support Israel no matter what, period, end of story. What did that guy, the guy with the congressman who wore the IDF, uh, uniform. Brian like, we haven't killed enough kids. He's like, we haven't killed. It's like, what? <laughs> you psycho. He's not even Jewish. That's, that's the craziest part about all of this. This is the same level. He's like, well, we can have bad things going, but uh, Ukraine is just such an important cause, et cetera, et cetera. It's just one of those you have to move past. The reason why, uh, and you and I were talking about this before mm -hmm. the show, why I still do think that it is very important is that's Chris Van Hollen. This guy lives in Bethesda, which is one of the richest neighborhoods in the world. It's right out here in Washington, D.C. It's full of people from the blob, it represents the state of Maryland. If he is willing to talk that way openly, I do think it is still uh, impactful and is interesting in terms of where the winds are blowing within the Democratic coalition. Yeah. Because he's not Bernie Sanders. This is not a far left person by any you know means. This is a former Nancy Pelosi top deputy, a very classic DSCC type person. So that's why I actually still found it. You know, his put his voting aside. The rhetoric, you know, usually precedes that or at least can proceed or show us something that was noteworthy to me. Uh, it it yeah. was. Yeah, it absolutely was. Um, the other thing that is noteworthy is so Van Hollen and uh, Senator Merkley mm -hmm. took this trip together to evaluate the aid distribution that I was referring to earlier. And so now you have Van Hollen making these comments. The other reason why it's noteworthy is receiving confirmation that, yes, Kids in Gaza at this point are literally dying from starvation, not just bombs, um, as per Sidney McCain, head of the World Food Program. So that in and of itself is newsworthy. Um, and then the other thing to point out about the fact that, you know, these two senators, standard issue Democratic senators, travel to the region is Merkley ends up being, alongside, you know, Bernie Sanders, basically mm -hmm. a Democrat at this point, uh, the only Democratic votes against this package. 
So clearly traveling to the region and seeing this up, you know, up close and personal also had a real impact on them, which is, you know, something you've seen more broadly with people who have actually traveled, for example, to mm. the occupied West Bank and seen what life is like mm -hmm. there. They come back very, uh, very changed by that experience. And so I thought that was really notable as well. That's a good point. Um, at the same time, this, we didn't want to let this pass. So there are obviously in terms of political implications, Joe Biden is quickly reckoning, or at least his team, which may still have somewhat of a brain left, is mm -hmm. quickly reckoning with the fact that they've got a massive problem in Michigan with um, Arab American voters in particular. And they've got a huge problem with their base in general. I mean, young voters, voters of color, dramatically opposed to what Biden's policy has been in Israel. So in an attempt to, you know, clean up the electoral mess, they dispatched a retinue of aides to Michigan to meet with some Arab American and Muslim leaders last week. Let's put this up on the screen. Um, the headline here from CBS is Biden aide acknowledges missteps on Gaza and regrets failure to express concern over loss of Palestinian life. Let me read you a little bit of this. He said, uh, this aide said, quote, we have left a very damaging impression based on what has been a wholly inadequate public accounting for how much the president, the administration, the country values the lives of Palestinians. This was per Deputy National Security Advisor John Finer. And the reason we know these details is apparently they leaked the audio. We are very well aware that we have misstepped in the course of responding to the crisis. He also acknowledged many in the Arab American community believe President Biden doesn't empathize with Palestinians in Gaza and the occupied West Bank. In the closed door meeting, Finer expressed regret over several specific instances of the administration's response, including a failure by the U.S. to publicly condemn remarks made by uh, Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, the ones where he called Palestinians animal, uh, animals in human form. We did not sufficiently indicate that we totally rejected and disagreed with those sort of sentiments out of a desire to sort of focus on solving the problem and not engaging a rhetorical back and forth with people who in many cases I think we all find somewhat abhorrent. He also re expressed regret over a statement made by the president on the 100th day of the conflict. The statement spoke to the plight of Israeli victims of the initial Hamas attack, including those taken hostage, but did not speak to Palestinian civilians killed by the Israeli response. Quote, there is no excuse for that. It should not have happened. I believe it will not happen again, but we know that there was a lot of damage done. He referred to that damage as a very, very big hole. I mean, noteworthy to me in this saga is the fact that there's no regrets over the actual policy, they seem to think this is all like a messaging issue. Mm -hmm. Like if they had just acknowledged Palestinians in the 100 day message, then people would be cool with the policy. Or if they'd like, you know, put out a little, another little uh, leak to the press about how they didn't like Yoav Gallant's comments about humans in animal form, maybe everything would be fine. There's clearly no, no acknowledgement that the actual policy itself is the issue that people have with the administration, not necessarily the the packaging of the policy, but the actual substance. Yeah, the polling really bears that out too. We can put this up there on the screen, which shows that the half of US adults now say that the military response has gone too far. You can actually compare it from the previous numbers and see a pretty substantial increase in the number of US adults, rising from November of 2023, where there's 40% said they did, to now 50%. So you have 50% of US adults overall who are saying that the Israeli response has gone too far. 31% says not uh, just about right. 15% then saying not gone far enough. If you look at the Democratic number, it's actually much higher. Previously, it was 58% said too far, now 63%, 24% who are agreeing, 9% who are saying not far enough. Amongst independents, the other number that matters, obviously, for the election, you actually see the number rise uh, to 52%, and then 28% at the bit about right, and 12% not far enough number. So the flip from the independent voters on their view at a minority, uh, basically a balance between too far and about right, from a couple of months ago to now, that's the big story to me, amongst the independents and then obviously amongst the Democrats as well. So you got two thirds of Democrats and about half of independents just demonstrating where if the trend line is going to continue this way as we go all the way into November, I mean, it's a lot like the Ukraine story. It's, you know, people will get caught up in something and then reality starts to set in. And then after a while, especially a year and a half, two years or so into something, which is around a year is about where we would be, you know, on November, uh, November 5th, a uh, fourth on election day, 
Well, you can see pretty clearly, I think, where things are going in that yeah, direction. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what was a few things that were noteworthy to me in that polling, uh, number one, most of the increase in the number of people who thought that the Israelis had gone too far actually wasn't Democrats who already thought that for a while. The biggest increases came from independents and even Republicans, a third of whom now say that the response has gone too far. That was really noteworthy. Also, if you dig into some of the details of this poll, you can see the problem that Biden has with um, some really key parts of his base and why this isn't just a Michigan problem, it's not just an Arab American problem, it's not just a Muslim American problem. About six in 10 non-white Democrats disapprove of how Biden is approaching the conflict. Um, about half of white Democrats approve. So you have a racial divide here, but 60% of non-white Democrats saying, no, Joe Biden, we do not like what you are doing with regard to Israel. Non-white Democrats, not even just all non-white people, non-white Democrats, 60% are like, mm -hmm. no, we don't like this policy. Seven in 10 Democrats under 45 disapprove. Seven in 10. Um, that is the opposite of the attitude of older Democrats, among whom nearly six in 10 approve. So the biggest divide on this issue is uh, a, a age divide. Seven in 10 Democrats, so 70% under 45 saying this is horrifying. And we've showed you the, shown you the polls in the past where a uh, majority of Democrats now say Israel is committing a genocide and another 30% are not sure and think they may be committing a genocide. So, you know, it, that is the context for understanding why it would be insulting that this administration official goes to Michigan and says, well, we've just left a very damaging impression. Mm -hmm. No, it's they, they, we have a very accurate impression of exactly what your policy is. The problem isn't the impression that's been left. The problem is the policy itself. And until you change that, you can kiss like, this is incredibly demoralizing to so many parts of your base and not just one little like narrow constituency in Michigan that potentially you could make up with suburban women or something somewhere else in the state. <laughs> That's a very good point, Crystal. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right, we're subscriber funded, we're building something new. We wanna replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.